Remember snapping great shots for SDPB's photo contest? Or seeing Sesame Street's Maria energizing kids? Or sipping tea with SDPB to celebrate your Downton devotion? We're making memories, all thanks to your support. SDPB engages minds across the state with Science Steve, outdoor adventures for families, musical treats, and a whole lot more. So remember how SDPB touches lives directly. And remember, we can't do it without you. My guest today, Stephanie Rissler, is a producer at South Dakota Public Television and the host of Focus. So welcome. Thank you. It's Thank good to you. be here. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for joining us. This is an exciting time because we are just getting ready for the legislative session. We've already had lots of festivities this past weekend, the inaugural, and I know you were here for those. Yeah. Um, I'm sure this is the time of year you're just ready to go. <laughs> it is exciting. We did have a crew come up. We covered uh, the oath of office ceremonies, which happened this last week. We then transitioned that night and covered the grand march at the Capitol Ball. All of it was live. And then our crew sticks around as the 90th legislative session begins on Tuesday, and we'll be here for that. It is exciting. I think uh, most of our crew have done this long enough where we understand the process. There is an element of history that's happening, and I think everybody gets that that's with our crew. Great. So you're with South Dakota Public Broadcasting. Let's just talk a little bit about what that is. I, I think that there could be some viewers that would not understand its connection to state government. So mm. let's just talk about it a second. Uh, SDPB is a state agency. We are under the Bureau of Information and Technology. We have television, radio, and online. So we are a multimedia network. We broadcast statewide. And so, um, you know, we're viewing, um, our shows are going out to our viewers, West River, East River, all over. So the programs that we do, uh, they are all encompassing of, of everyone that tunes in, whether it's on the radio, on TV, online. Mm -hmm. So it's a variety of things. We are state agency, as I mentioned. So what that means is state government pays for the salary of the employees. Um, we are treated just like all state employees when it comes to that package. In terms of programming, that's where our fundraising comes in. So when you see people on air, whether it's myself or some of the other folks, and we say, please you know, show your support, pay for the programming that's important to you, mm -hmm. truly that is what pays for the programming. State dollars do not go out and purchase those. It's the money that comes in from viewers. So that actually does help us understand, okay, they're sending money in for programs like this. This is what they want to see. This is what they want to invest in. So it is kind of a, a, a vote from our viewers during those pledge drives. Okay, and we can always count them that you are here uh, covering what's going on in state government for the people of the state. We are the window, yep. 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 So your studios are located in Vermilion, mm -hmm. all right, and so how do you make that work uh, versus having things in the studios versus uh, being out on site, on location? Uh, we do it a couple different ways. There are, sometimes there are some unique challenges that come with that, but in, in a sense, we have a crew that does see a lot of windshield time. We do have to travel, particularly with our uh, high school activities. We cover our high school activities, which has been a partnership we've had for a few years. Mm -hmm. And that is a great thing for people who can't make it and yes. see their kids, whether it's the fine arts or the athletics. Mm -hmm. We have um, we've got a trailer that we use and we have a we call it a Winnebago but it's kind of our studio on wheels okay. sometimes those will go out and our engineers um, are very good we've got a very technically savvy staff so if we have to be in Rapid City or Pier or mm -hmm. Aberdeen we can take that equipment with us we do what we need to do and then when it's time to tear down we can tear it all down and we take it back to Vermilion we don't actually do a lot of live shows in our studio. The show that I produce and host is done there. We've got a musical show called No Cover, No Minimum. That's done uh, in Vermilion, although sometimes we will go on location with that. And our pledge drives. 
That's, okay. you know, there might be a few things that come up here and there, mm -hmm. but typically the stuff that we do is across the state. All right, so we're in the state capitol right now for the beginning of the year uh, for the legislative session, but uh, how often through the year do you come to the state capitol? Well, we, during the legislative session, we have a crew and peer for the whole session. Oh, okay. Um, myself, I usually will come out here for maybe one or two weeks in the beginning. I might come out once or twice later in the session, but mostly I stay in Vermilion. I still do a live show on Thursday nights, and as much as I've begged to come out here, I think it's better that I stay in Vermilion. And then uh, everything that's done here, we actually see it whether it's happening live on the House and Senate floor, I'm watching it as if I'm there. Okay. Um, our crew will cover committee meetings and they'll send it back. So, you know, that element of getting to know the lawmakers, if I have a question or I don't understand something, that is missing because I can't just go up and talk to them. Mm -hmm. But I am seeing what's going on. One of the tools that has been helpful is all of the committee rooms. Um, or the committee meetings, if there's a bill, it's all online. Right. So I can really follow a bill from mm -hmm. the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And that whole element has actually changed. It's been about four or five years now that we've gone that route. It used to be we had a crew out here all session long because we did a nightly show. Um, we had a nightly recap and we moved away from that in 2011. So now we just carry the House and the Senate live every day live on TV, unedited, and then if there's a particular bill, we'll have a videographer go and cover that. And then I'll take everything that happened in the week and I put together a weekly show that airs on Friday nights. Okay. So it's kind of a recap of some of the things that happened mm -hmm. out here. So it sounds like legislative session is a particularly busy time for you. It can be, yeah, yeah. Depending yeah. on what's going on. Yeah, for sure. All right, so to come out and do on-site like this, there's lots of equipment, and uh, you mentioned a Winnebago that you have and that kind of thing, but talk about what it's like to haul all your equipment when you're getting ready to come to the Capitol. How do you get that done? We have a very fit staff. <laughs> they must be. <laughs> it, you know what? It is. We, um, we had to be ready for, on Saturday for the inaugural. Mm -hmm. Part of our crew came out on Thursday. Okay. They hauled it all out in a trailer and they got it set up. Um, you know, and it is a lot. We have a tiny little office in the basement of the Capitol. We try to store some of our stuff in there, mm -hmm. but as people walk around, if they happen to be here the first week or two, we do have equipment everywhere. There is a lot of equipment. We've got our web cameras that are in the House and Senate, so um, South Dakota citizens can turn in, tune in anytime mm -hmm. and watch their state house as it takes place. Um, you know, our live cameras are here, so we're live on TV now, which is a new element. Mm -hmm. There is a lot that goes into yep. it, for sure. Well, once you get into the job, you realize, man, you do a lot of stuff, you know, and, and every single day is completely different. And so, uh, as an intern coming into the job, I mean, we cover sports, we cover politics, we cover music, we cover current events, we cover just all these things. And um, I, I don't know if people realize just the vast stuff, I mean, everything that we cover. So I really learned how to adjust everything uh, for, you know, if you're shooting sports, you want this kind of a look. And it's just a little different, you know, than shooting politics or just a good sit down interview, you know, you'll light it a little bit different than if you're doing a sports interview, you know, uh, different things are acceptable. Sports interviews, it's acceptable for the coach to be in amongst all these screaming fans and crowd and the audio might not be exactly perfect, you know, uh, but that's okay because it's sports. It's an energy that you're trying to, you know, bring across through the video. Whereas if it's a sit down interview with a World War II veteran or something, you know, you're, you're definitely gonna, you know, take different precautions and, and shoot it differently to really get that emotion across through the video. And, um, and that's just stuff that I've learned from working with all the people that have way more experience than me and I just try to learn all the time. So we've uh, heard that you're a producer. For those that don't understand what that term means, what's your job description? Well, uh, it, you know, it's different for everybody. 
it's um, it's a little bit of organizing. Uh, it's understanding whatever your topic is. Uh, my technical experience isn't quite as high as some other producers that we have on staff, but then again, I also do our on-air work where some of our other producers don't do on-air mm -hmm. work. So we, you kind of give and take within whatever position that you're in. Um, for example, I'll just take my South Dakota Focus show. Uh, that show airs Thursday evenings. It's a live one-hour broadcast. It's a public affairs talk show. So my job is to figure out what issues do South Dakotans want to know more about? What can we educate people on, whether it's on identity theft, Medicaid, education, maybe there's a particular legislative issue that's working its way through. Mm -hmm. Now I have to find a good group of people that can come on and provide some good answers, that understand what that issue is, are willing to sit down with me on camera, when I put together the program, I write out the questions in advance and I send those questions to the guests. I don't want anybody to come on and feel like I tricked them or mm -hmm. it's a gotcha situation. Right. Our job is to educate South Dakotans mm -hmm. and the more material they have to be better prepared, the better show it's going to be. So part of my job is making sure I've done all of that, then making sure our technical crew knows, okay, I've got so many guests on the show. Um, I went out and I, and I did some pre-interviews beforehand. We're going to show these during the program, um, understanding that it's an interactive show, meaning once we get started, viewers have the ability to call in and they can ask their own questions or they can email a question in. So it's kind of making sure all of those things that go within that one hour, we're utilizing the best hour that we can, whatever the questions are, whatever our tech technical capabilities are mm -hmm. and all of that is executed so that would be kind of my role as a producer and then hosting it I just just go with it <laughs> <laughs> once you've done all of those things you understand it right so it's kind of easy to sit down and so is it easier to host a show that you've been the producer for I think it is yeah I think it is um, for how many years did I do it? For 12 years, I actually produced the show and we had a different host. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were times we would go over the script and we would change things, not because the host didn't like them, but the way a person speaks is different than maybe somebody else speaks or writes. So we would fix things so they would work to this particular host. Um, now, with me in it, it's easy for me. We can go through a run through quickly. We don't have to change things. Um, if for some reason technically the teleprompter didn't work, I wrote it. I understand it. I could probably do it through my mind. Mm -hmm. And that does make it easier. Right. And I would think the so. viewer yeah. would know there was no technical error, mm -hmm. which is what we want. Right. So the show that you host is called Focus? It's called South Dakota Focus. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. I think I was on that show you right were. after the, the flood. flood. Yes. Yep. We were out there talking about all of the things going on, and it was a great opportunity to educate the community. You, you know, know, and it's another program we can use in that particular show that we did. We were actually supposed to go on, I think, that morning with the governor to talk about the budget. Oh. And uh, his staff started contacting us saying, you know, we've got this, it actually was a couple days before, they said, we've got this flooding issue. I don't think he's going to be able to make it. And I got back to him and I said, you know, we could use that hour to pull together mm -hmm. all of the leaders to educate the state. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. Yeah. And we use that. It's a great opportunity. For that tool. All right. So now sometimes there's a producer and a director. Talk about the difference in uh, producer and director if you've got both involved. We do. And our director is going to be more on the technical aspect of mm -hmm. it. The, the director makes sure, um, well, we have a set that's in place, our lighting is in place, um, oversees the rest of the crew in terms of making sure microphones are ready. And then when the show is live, it's the director's job. I, I joke around, but I say he uh, drives the mothership. He's the one in the back that's pushing the cameras, telling the, the camera operators uh, to get a close-up, to get a wide shot. So he's kind of directing what you or I as a viewer would see at home. So that's their job. Okay. Do they ever conflict with each other? You know, no, not really. A producer is more about content and okay. making sure the director understands uh, this is the show. Now, there might be different venues. Um, you know, you might be doing a concert or uh, a sporting activity and a producer 
may say, you know what, I really want a, a shot of the audience member or something. Well, maybe the director can't necessarily get a cutaway right away. So there might be some of that, mm -hmm. um, but not with what I do. What, what's really rewarding in this job is that uh, we get to learn so much about the state that we live in and um, you know we get to go and meet so many people and hear so many stories and just learn so much and uh, you know every and we and then we get to take that and we get to inform the public of South Dakota and we get to help share those little stories around the state all the time you know well uh, so for you now you're sitting in a different chair and usually you're the one that's planning and thinking about the content of a show, acting as the host, but now I'm asking you questions. Yeah. How is this different for you? You know, <laughs> yeah, I was a little nervous. I, I was wondering, oh, what is she going to ask me? Are we going to talk about, because this is my 19th legislative session, I was thinking, oh, you know, are there some exciting events that have happened? And, you know, the more I got to thinking about it, as long as I've been working with SDPB, and everything that we've seen kind of come and go. I'm very honored and proud to be with the network. So just to be able to talk about what we do and our mission mm -hmm. is comfortable for me. Yeah. So once I actually told myself that, I thought, <laughs> yeah, you know, that is true. I'll be fine. So we've been discussing uh, legislative coverage, and I know you and the entire team are working on a lot of different projects. Uh, do you have one coming up, I understand, that is revolving around the state's historic county courthouses? We have a documentary. <clears throat> In fact, Judge Rush, who's now Senator Rush, is um, responsible in part for that. He had written a book about all of the county courthouses. Okay. And I did just a small little thing with him a couple years ago, and it turned out pretty good. And so we went to the State Historical Society, and it was suggested that we apply for a grant to do a one-hour documentary. So that is now what it is turned into. So for the last year and a half, we have been traveling to just about every county in the state and on February 26th, it will air. It's a, a documentary about the courthouses. And it, so, it sounds kind of dry, just, you know, uh, these buildings, but it's not about the buildings. It's about the fights and the battles that really uh, shaped what our state is today. We have a lot of cities that used to be the county seat, mm, yes. and they lost to an election and they've disappeared. Mm -hmm. We have cities that are underwater that used to be the county seat. Um, the fights that go along with how some of these towns won. One of them out in Belfouche where Seth Bullock, this heroic sheriff actually was a little shyster and convinced <laughs> the railroad to go to his town where he had a bunch of land in Belfouche. And um, the way he won the election, so Belfouche could win the county seat. He threw a rodeo and got all the cowboys drunk. And the town that was the county seat out there is no more, and it's just this beautiful open pasture. But we have, you know, some pictures that we've been able to dig up that shows what that town looked like. So it has been uh, a lot of fun digging up history. Because some of it, I think, people will be surprised. They would have mm -hmm. had no idea all of these towns that used to be yep. and how the railroad defined what our state looked like, the battles that took place. One particular county, they told them, if you vote for us, you will receive a pair of free blue jean overalls. And so there's just They were fun. bribing. Yes, they were bribed, <laughs> yes. So it's been fun to put together and we're almost done with it. We're in the, the tweaking stage. We're gonna have a big premiere party out here in Pier. Fantastic. Um, going to do that at the Cultural Heritage Center? Or I think how, they it have it at the Visitor Center. Visitor Center, great. And Judge Rush will be there to talk about his book. Excellent. Um, Chief Justice David Gilbertson will oh, be there fun. to speak. Fun. So something like that for me is a little bit nerve-wracking because they're all the historians. So I've been, I've been uh, sending copies to make sure we've gotten it right. <laughs> great. Well, good for you. Do you do many documentaries like that? Uh, I do. Mm -hmm. The last one that I did uh, would have been a couple years ago, and we did one on the history of stained glass, which was a lot, you know, uh, you know, on the surface it sounds a little dry, but there are a lot of, there's a lot of history and stories that go into the stained glass we have in our state. Yep. 
And that one was fun. That one was nominated for an Emmy. Wonderful. Um, I've done a, a historical documentary on our state capitol building. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and there's, there's others that we've done. I've done some documentaries on Native American dance. Um, I did a documentary on the huge meth crisis we've had across not just here, but the Great Plains in general. Mm -hmm. And I've done some documentaries where I've gone into the prisons and followed prisoners for a two-year span. Wow. And so there have been a variety, but yeah, about, about a dozen or so. Right. So. Well, it sounds very interesting, and uh, looking forward to the one that's coming yeah. up in February. That sounds uh, very good. fascinating. Yeah. So there's a lot of friends of public broadcasting out there, and I hope that we've uh, enlightened some as to the background behind uh, public television and some of the other public broadcasting as a broader umbrella. Yep. Yep, and uh, we're very thankful that you're doing what you're doing. So what are you looking forward to most during this legislative session? Oh, you never know what will unfold. The issues that you think are going to take center stage typically aren't, and those little mm -hmm. surprises that come up that you don't know about. I think we're just excited to be out here. I truly feel like it's part of history. And I'm actually excited that people can tune in and watch it on TV as it happened. That's right. There's no editing to it. I don't try to um, transcribe or explain a bill. You can tune in as a viewer and check it out on your own. Mm -hmm. I like that. When I first started years and years ago, the media that was out here was large from every little newspaper to our big newspapers mm -hmm. to the TV stations. And we've seen that all go away. But the one thing that has been consistent has been SDPB. Now, we have changed a little bit in the sense we don't provide a nightly recap, but we're still here. We're still mm -hmm. online. We've actually expanded. If you think about now, we provide stuff on TV. So I have noticed in terms of the legislative session, you know, the media just doesn't come out and cover it anymore. And part of that to me is a little bit sad because um, this is our state house they are making the laws that will govern us as a people. Mm -hmm. And I think the more um, educated a society is, we can make decisions for ourselves and understand our world a little bit better. But I also understand that media, mediums in general, are changing. Mm -hmm. And so, and, uh, what people, uh, where they want to see their information from, that kind of thing. Do you think yeah. budgets have anything to do with that? I, I think so. Tightening up and I budgets? think when we talk about how things have changed and, and where people want to get um, their information, newspapers now, people want to go online. Right. Um, the fact that we have. Uh, web, not webcast, but you can listen to a bill online. Mm -hmm. Now reporters can sit in their office in yes. Aberdeen or Rapid City and they can listen to the committees as they happen. And the good thing about that is where the silver lining is, there is never a reason a reporter can get something wrong. That's right. Because it is all there archived. Mm -hmm. So that is the, the silver lining, but I have yeah. noticed how uh, things have changed mm -hmm. and reporters have kind of backed off and in a way it's sad but I do understand it but we're still here yes you are <laughs> and we can count on that yeah what do you think about social media I, I like social media and I think it can be a very useful tool I get the opportunity to visit with some USD students because we're connect mm -hmm. we're, we're on the same campus as USD and I get asked a lot about blogging and reporters doing it you know, I might be a little bit old school in the fact that I still believe if you're a journalist, you have to remain fair and your opinions should never enter into a story. You tell the facts, you do not give a, an opinion one way or another, and the best that you can, try to provide as much of a quote as you can. Don't take things out of context. I think when we start to see some reporters go into that blogging mm -hmm. and um, use social media to give their opinions and insight, and this is just my personal opinion on this, I would never do that simply because I don't ever want anyone to feel that my opinion is in a story. My job as a reporter is to simply provide the facts. And so, you know, when we talk about social media, that would be the one area I am a, I get a little bit concerned about. Mm -hmm. But relate. even with that, I tell the students, you are still going to find reporters that are doing a good job. You just might have to work a little bit harder to figure out who they are. Mm -hmm.
So, all right. Well, good. Thank you for being here and letting the people have that opportunity yes. to be part of government. Well, thank and you for asking us. You bet. And thank you for sharing your time with me here on City Limits. You're welcome. Appreciate it. You're watching New South Dakota Public Television. The eight stations of the South Dakota Public Television Network now conclude broadcasting activities for this day. The staff and management wish you a pleasant good evening from South Dakota Public Television.